Hey, Joe Gilder here. Normally I'm posting videos about music and audio, but when a solar eclipse happens right overhead and you live in Nashville, you gotta talk about it. The thing is, there are plenty of photographers and videographers in the world who captured amazing footage of the sun and the eclipse itself. I wasn't that interested in that. What I was interested in was capturing the surroundings and what happened here on the ground. Specifically, what does a solar eclipse sound like here on the ground? We'll get to that later in the video, but first I'll share with you a little bit of footage of the eclipse, including a couple of cool time lapses from different places around the neighborhood that I think you'll like. Here's our super scientific eclipse watching system. You got a pinhole right here and some paper at the bottom of this cereal box. And if we look in here, See right there? There it is. About a third of the way, maybe? I've got this cute little zoom camera, wide angle lens, and I want to get a shot of the skyline, but there's trees everywhere, so <laughs> we're going up to the roof. Kids, don't try this at home. I've got this place where I can climb up. Stay right there. Okay. It's very hot, very hot. I doubt you can tell, but the moon, the sun is about hot. It's hot. The moon's covered the sun about halfway right now, and the lighting is so creepy. I've got direct sunlight, but it feels like sunset, but it's one o'clock in the afternoon. All right. If you ever read Seth Godin, Purple Cow, good book. Also good for propping up your camera to capture a total solar eclipse. You know, that happens once every 500 years. Remember how we love those Tennessee moons. Every night I'd scour the sky just to find a reason, a reason to call. Remember how you'd sit there across the room I would try to catch your eye only to find I got nothing to say at all That's amazing Look at the, the arms so cool! I see, I see a plant I see Is that Venus, Venus maybe? I see Venus, Mommy! Y'all hear the crickets? Yeah, I do. It's 1.30 in the afternoon. What'd you think about that? It was really cool. It's pretty fun, right? I could not get over how crazy it looked outside just before and after the eclipse. It was daytime, but it was dark, but it wasn't like sunset, but it kind of was, and everything was kind of greenish, orange. Anyway, super crazy experience. I hope you get to experience one one day. Now, before heading out to experience the eclipse myself, I came down to the studio and set up these suckers. These are a couple of Earthworks SR25 small diaphragm condenser mics. I use these a lot on acoustic guitar and drum overheads as well. Really great mics, nice and clean, pristine if you will. And so I literally put them on this stereo mic bar and plopped them down right out here outside my studio door and hit record. Now I had heard from folks like Destin at Smarter Every Day that nature will respond in a kind of interesting way when the eclipse happens. It thinks it's nighttime, so things like the birds go to their nests and the bugs, the crickets start to chirp and things like that. Well, I wanted to capture it, hence the microphones. Let's jump in here and see what it sounded like, shall we? 
Okay, as you can probably tell from the video outside, it's noisy in the south in the summer just in general. The cicadas are always doing their thing. So there's a, a noise level that's already there. What's interesting is how much louder it got when the eclipse happened. Check out the footage. Okay, here's the total footage that I recorded. It's about 40 minutes of audio. I set up the mics. We drove to a nearby park to experience the eclipse there, came back and checked out the recording. I've divided it up into three sections, roughly equal. They're about 11 minutes each. This is the 11 minutes before the eclipse. This is during the eclipse and kind of the immediate aftermath. And then this is the time after. So as a baseline, here's what it just sounds like in the normal, just a normal afternoon in Nashville sounds like. And just so you know, I live in a, I live in the Nashville city limits. We're not really out in the country, but it still feels fairly rural. Uh, but you can hear other people around and things like that. So you can hear people off in the neighborhood hooping and hollering and getting ready for the eclipse. So that, that's normal. That's about the amount of, of volume outside on a given day. What's interesting, if you look over here, this blob of audio is a lot bigger. Here's what that sounds like. So aside from the normal sounds of traffic driving by and things like that, it is noticeably louder when the eclipse happened. And then what was also interesting is like long time after the eclipse, a good 10 minutes after the eclipse was over, it was quite a bit louder than before. To review, before sounded like this. Once the eclipse happened and it got dark, it sounded like this. You can hear people screaming in the background. And then once the eclipse died down and the bugs chilled out, it was still kind of loud. Now, if this wasn't nerdy enough for you, I actually got out a spreadsheet and calculated the volumes of each section and noted the differences. I used a piece of software we use in the audio world called TT Dynamic Range Meter that literally just measures the volume of a given piece of audio. I took the RMS value, which is the average volume for each of these three clips of audio, and the results were pretty interesting. Now, the actual numbers of the volume don't matter, but what's interesting is the change. So the decibel level before the eclipse was around negative 37 decibels. During the eclipse was negative 23, after was negative 33. That means there was a 14 dB difference in volume between before the eclipse and during the eclipse. 14 dB, if, if you're not into audio and don't know what that means, typically it's understood that a six dB difference in volume is roughly a doubling of volume. Or there's some argument there, some folks say it's more like a 10 dB difference is more of a perceived difference in loudness. Either way, 14 dB is well over twice as loud just because the sun got blocked by the moon. I don't know, that's kind of interesting. Another interesting point is that the after volume was still, although it was about 10 dB quieter than the during volume, it was still about 4 dB louder than it was before the eclipse happened. That's also kind of interesting. What's the point to all this? I don't know. I tend to be a curious, inquisitive person, and this was fascinating. I, I, so many people, it was so fun to see so many people filled with wonder, experiencing this crazy cool phenomenon. And then the ability to capture the audio of it, which I, don't, I didn't see anybody else bothering to do that, just seems interesting. So if you'd like to hear this audio, there'll be a link in the description where you can download the full resolution WAV file, bring it into your system and listen. If you're into that, or if you wanna measure it or get real scientific, cause I'm definitely not a scientist, maybe you know more of what to do with this than I do, but I thought it was kind of interesting. All right, that's it for this week's video. If you want more videos about science, my channel is not the one for you, but if you're into music and audio and recording, hit the subscribe button. A lot more good stuff coming your way. See ya. Look how bright it's getting already. Hey, do you want to